Hi everyone, this is the IFC Architect, and today we're going to model a simple chair in Blender and then classify it as an IFC object type. Alright, let's get to it. So I've got Blender open and Bonsai installed, and the first thing I'm going to do is create an IFC4 project. So you can use all of these settings, you don't have to use metric or millimeters as long as the ratio is the same, and the only thing we're going to change is the template to blank project. So I'm going to say blank project and I'm going to say create project. We know it's been created because on the left-hand side in our outliner, we've got our site, building, and my story plan. All right, from here, we're going to save the IFC. That's very critical. I'm going to save it. You can see that I've saved it in the bottom there, and just make sure to save periodically throughout. All right, so we're going to get into it. We can use Blender modeling techniques and then classify it as an IFC. I'm going to press Add, and I'm going to say Mesh, and I'm going to say Cube. And then from here, I'm going to press N on my keyboard. In the bottom left corner here, you can see my screencast keys. It records everything I'm doing if you want to follow along. And then I would just recommend that you turn on your snaps because I'm going to be using them throughout the tutorial. So with the cube selected, I'm going to go to its dimensions. I know I want the X and Y to be 40 millimeters. I'm going to start with the leg, essentially. So 40 millimeters. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a bit better. And then the Z direction, I want this to be 318 millimeters tall. So I'm going to zoom in some more. From here, I'm going to press 7 on my number pad. That's going to bring me to a plan view. And I want this object to sit in the top right-hand quadrant of this point, because that's how the IFC types are kind of generated from. So we're going to go to this corner. I'm going to select, place my 3D cursor there with shift and right click. And I'm going to right click and say set origin to 3D cursor. And I want to move this point to that origin to make sure that this leg is in that quadrant. So we're going to go to location and we're going to press zero and it's moved it into the correct position. Once we've done that, I'm going to select the leg and I'm going to use a typical array. So I'm going to click out of that little arrow there. I'm going to select our normal blender modifiers. I'm going to say add modifier, generate array. I'm going to off deselect relative offset. I'm going to select constant offset. And then in the X di distance, I'm just going to say what I want basically is 400 by 400 at, for the seat. So we're going to say 400 minus 40, which is the thickness of the leg. So that's going to be 360. Before that, I want to apply scale. So I'm just going to say control A, and I'm just going to say scale. And there you can see we are at the correct distance. We can use the measuring tool, just check that is going to be 400, perfect. Okay, back to selection tool. We're going to create another array, generate array. This is going to be deselect relative offset, select constant offset, and then we want it to be in the Y direction, and we're going to make it again 360. Now we have four legs to our table. So I'm going to select this again, and I'm going to say Shift D Z. I'm going to bring it up G Z, and then I'm going to disable both of these arrays just so we have one leg. So we duplicated it. So it's been duplicated, and we placed it in the correct position. I'm going to select it again, and I'm going to change the Z value to 40 millimeters. So it's a 40 by 40 cube, and then my X and Y direction I want them to be 400. Now we have a seat that's in the correct position, essentially. So we're going to duplicate our legs once again. We're going to do the back frame. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. I'm going to press Z, and we're going to snap it, G, Z, to above the seat. We're going to get rid of the second array, and then we're going to move with G and Y the back frame to the back portion there. Then I want this to have a slight slant, so I'm going to press Tab to go into Edit Mode. I'm going to press 3, so I have my Face Selection Mode on. I'm going to select the top, and I'm going to say G for Grab, B for Base Point. Select the inside line, press Y, and then slide this along so it aligns with the edge of the seat. Essentially how this works is if we go to our Plan View, so I'm press 7, it lines up with that edge. Okay, once I'm done, I'm going to press tab, and then I'm going to create our final backrest. Select the seat here, I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it, and press Z to line it up with the top here, and then I'm going to adjust the dimensions of the seat here so that the X and Y dimensions are slightly different. So the X dimension, we want this to be 400 minus 80, so it's going to be 320. We want the Y dimension to be the thickness, so we're going to say 20. We want the Z dimension to be the height of this, so we're going to say 150. And then I'm going to grab this and say GY to snap it to the back there. GY align with the inside line, and then GZ with the top there, and then GX with the side there. So now we have our completed chair.
From here, we're going to select each of these objects, and what we want to do is apply any modifiers before we join this into a single object. So the quickest way to do that, instead of going through each of these items and applying each modifier, is going object, convert to mesh. And then you can see that that has applied the modifiers everywhere. Then the next thing we want to do is join everything together. I'm going to select the backrest first, and then the back frame, the seat, and then the legs last. And I'm going to right click and say join. And you can see that that's joined it all into one object. From here, I'm just going to make sure that our location, rotation, and scale have all been applied. So these should be zero, rotation should be zero, and scale should be one. That looks perfect. And then we're going to rename this chair to chair 400 by 400 millimeters. You can label it whatever you like. And from here, we're actually going to classify it as an IFC object. So we're going to select the chair. I'm going to go back to my scene properties. I'm going to open up this, open this up a little bit. And then I'm just going to go to object information. So it's the second tab from the right hand side, from the left hand side. And it's also the second from this drop down, essentially. So we're going to classify it as an IFC element type. We're going to classify it as an IFC furniture type. We're going to classify it as a chair. That's perfect. And we're going to leave it with the model body model view context. That's perfect. So we're going to say assign IFC class. You're going to see it disappears because it's been added to the IFC type product folder. So we can view that by just clicking on this little eye icon, and there is our type, essentially. So this is kind of like a family or a component in other programs. Um, it works in the same way. So from here, we want to add a 2D representation of this chair in plan view. So we select the chair, and we go to our Geometry and Materials tab, which is the third from the left. We go to Representations, and we can see we only have one, which is the tessellation. What I want to add now is a plan body plan view. So we can click plus there, and we have given a whole bunch of options. So the first one is trace outline. We're going to do that one first. If we click on there, we also see this from bounding box, from object. So this is a different object, full representation and cube. I'm going to go with trace outline. It's efficient. I'm going to say, okay. And you can see there, it's basically taken the outline of each object of that component from above and made it into a 2D representation. So if we press seven, we can see it's perfectly orth orthographic. And if we go back into our representations, we can activate, oh, there is the 3D model, and there is the 2D representation, essentially. Brilliant, we've done it. Okay, so what if we want it to look different in 2D than it does in 3D? So I'm gonna start by duplicating this chair. So I'm gonna go back into tessellation. We're gonna go into furniture tool. We're gonna click on this little grid icon. I'm just going to select it again until we've got a little icon there. And I'm going to click on this little gear icon and I'm going to say duplicate type. So I'm happy for this to be a 400 by 400 copy. We're fine with that. I've just selected the chair and say close. close. So over here, I'm going to make sure I've got the copy, which is this, this 0 0.001. I'm even going to hide the original chair. That's fine. They kind of overlapped. And then I'm going to get rid of, with the copy selected, the 2D annotation. Remove representation here. Perfect. That's fine. From here, I'm going to use the chair as a base, and I'm going to draw in a 2D representation with Blender modeling tools. So I'm going to press 7 on my keyboard. I'm going to place my 3D cursor in the bottom left corner there. I'm going to make sure I have the select box selected. I'm going to say Shift A, and I'm going to say Mesh and Plane. So from here, I'm just going to adjust the size of the plane so that it is 400 by 400. And then I'm going to line it up with my chair. So select this and say GX and then GY. So from here, I'm going to bring it up. So I'm going to say GZ, so it's above the chair. And then I'm going to go into it. I'm going to say edit mode, basically. What I want to do, basically, is give this a curved back and a bit of a backrest as 2D representation, essentially. So I'm going to take two. I'm going to select this edge say GY, snap it to the end there. Then I'm going to press 1. I'm going to select these vertices here. Say Control B, and then V. And that allows me to adjust this angle. So I'm going to scroll up with my mouse wheel, and that looks like enough for me. There is also a bevel context box here while you were doing that. Once you click out, it's going to disappear. So just something to consider. You can see I've got nine segments and all of this. It doesn't matter. It just looks good to me. That's fine. I'm going to click out. After I've beveled these edges, I'm going to press tab to go out. 
and then I need to apply my scale. You can see the scale here has been changed. So we're going to say Control A, and we're going to say Scale. Then we're going to go back into our object. I'm going to press A to select the face. I'm going to press I to go in, and I'm going to make that inset, which is kind of like the opposite of offset, 30 millimeters. Brilliant. Okay. Then from here, I'm going to get rid of all the faces. So I'm going to press A, and I'm going to press X, and then there's going to be an only faces choice. So we're going to get rid of all of the faces, and we're only left with the 2D lines, the 2D representation, essentially. And from here, I'm going to get rid of everything I don't want. I'm going to press 2 so during in edit mode, so I can select the edges, and I'm going to press shift, so I can select everything I want to get rid of. So basically, I want a backrest that curves around slightly with slightly small armrests and no other features. So I've selected everything I don't want. I'm going to press X and I'm going to say edges. I'm going to press tab to go into my object mode and I'm going to say GY to bring it down and then GZ to bring it to the floor. And then here, I'm going to locate the origin in the same position as the chair. So selecting this 2D presentation, snap it to the corner, right click and say set origin to 3D cursor. All right, then from here, we're going to select our chair and we're going to say, okay, cool. Yes, I want a plan body plan view. I'm going to click plus, but instead of trace outline, I'm going to go from object. If you select that, it's going to give you a little eyedropper tool that you can click on. And then you just need to hover over the object and it'll say, okay, cool. You want to use the plane? I'm going to say, okay. And you can see now that that has been used as the 2D representation. So it really can be anything you want essentially. All right, so I'm going to delete this 2D representation. We don't need it anymore. And now we have two chairs, which are slightly different. If I visualize this one and I go to my 2D annotation, you can see that is using the traced outline and the other one is using our custom 2D representation. All righty. So I'm going to hide our original first again. So let's just hide it out of our way. What if we want to adjust the chair to slightly match this new representation. So we can go back to tessellation. So I'm not going to do a curved space, but I am going to just give this chair some armrests. So this is our secondary, our copy, essentially. And we're going to select it, and we're just going to say, with the chair tool selected, or the multi-object tool, we're going to say tab. And that's going to take us, if we go to our top right-hand side, from object mode into IFC item mode. So now we have access to individual items that we can edit. So which one do I want to edit? I want to edit maybe this arm here, and I'm just going to say, I want to go into edit mode. I can press just tab again. I'm going to say control R to give it a loop cut and then control R again. I'm going to say GZ, and bring it down by 40 millimeters. And then I'm going to press three to select this edge here and say E to bring it out basically to a halfway point. I'm going to press E again, make it 40 millimeters. And then from below, I'm going to say E to bring it down to the, the chair itself, the seat. And then I'll press tab, and you can see that that object has been edited. So I can do the same here, or I can delete this object, press X and say delete, and then grab this one and say shift D, and then say tab, tab A, G, X, and move it into that position. And you can see that it has moved into that position perfectly. And it is its own separate object that I can edit. And then to get out of this, we just need to press tab again with nothing selected and it will bring us into object mode. And then just remember always to save your IFC. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. I hope that was helpful. Just a heads up, I have a coffee page if you would like to support the creation of these videos. Coffee supporters get videos a week earlier and they help really create the content. And thank you to my coffee supporters. Awesome, thank you everyone, bye.